Hello everybody, it's Dr. Zeno with 15 Minute Fuel. We're just in 15 minutes a day. We're going to fuel your mind, your body, and your future. Alright, just for the announcements today, you know, make sure you're signing up on all our social media, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and uh, iTunes as well. Uh, if just sure, you know, check out the store for our hero swag. I'm wearing my 0% secret identity shirt today. And also, thank you so much. Uh, episode 34 of We Are Heroes is up live right now, so you'll see the link pop up uh, through this uh, Facebook Live, or if you're hearing it, just go, uh, if you're hearing this in a podcast, you could go to our YouTube channel, Dr. Zeno, or you could go to the Facebook fan page, Dr. Zeno, Z-A-I-N-O, and you'll be able to see, especially on YouTube, you'll see all the 15-minute fuels, and then you will be able to see all the We Are Heroes. So We Are Heroes episode 34 was really good. And what's really cool is, you know, we're at episode 34 and you look at episode one. So episode one, it was, uh, you know, Chris in the office. That's kind of what it was. And we had this idea. And now when you start to see from episode 24 and now 34 on stages and just doing some big things, it's really great to see the documented journey of what's going on. And what do you see what happened uh, this weekend, this last weekend? This was a, another big milestone as well. So you'll see that You'll see this week in probably 10 days. So let's get started. First of all, I see everybody that's coming on. Make sure you say hello, uh, get some thumbs up, hit the heart, then hit the share button. And just let me know you're here. And any questions you have, just put it and I will answer them for you. So today, let me move this up some. All right, today I'm gonna to talk about, the title of this is Heroes Are Dealers of Hope. Heroes Are Dealers of Hope. And I'll go into a kind of a story and what kind of inspired me to talk about that this weekend. You know, in the, in the movies or wherever, it could be even real life, when people are in a situation that they don't like, and they're threatened, and they're scared, and they have anxiety, when the hero or the person willing to take action shows up, all of a sudden they have hope again. So they went from despair to hope. Okay, but watch this. The circumstance is still the same, right? So the hero just shows up. So they have faith or hope in that person, and that person saves the day. Well, the same thing uh, when it comes to life, let's flip it the opposite. When someone gets discouraged or they lose hope, it's amazing the whole pattern of thoughts brings them into despair, despair and depression where they don't move. They don't make the right choices for themselves. You know, this weekend, uh, we had, uh, it was a great time. So you had uh, about 40 people. They were in a speak-off, which was a lot of fun. And everybody presented their three-minute talk and then from the three minute talk there was 12 finalists right and then from the 12 finalists there was a winner and uh, it was great but I saw what happened there were some people that you know they, they did their three minute talk because they show up just like I showed up with their message so they show up with their message to do their three minute talk maybe they didn't prepare maybe they didn't practice and they didn't make the cut and so the next day so this is on Thursday the next day you know you could see they're sitting in the chair and they look defeated and I'm like are you okay? And they're like, yeah, I just, and they were so tough on themselves. They were so upset, upset with themselves. I'm like upset. They're like, I just messed up that three minute. And they actually, they felt they left, they let their message down. Right? So all of us have, have a message, a story, something to tell the world. So these, so in this situation, they felt that they let the message down. They let themselves down. And it was like this prison around them. I'm like, well, it, it's, it's, Think about the circumstances. You know, there's six judges or seven. There's a timer to your left, and there's a video camera in front of you, and you had three minutes to tell your story. I go, so it's not really life. You know, life, that's not life. It'll never happen like that. But here you're basing your entire message of life, the entire future, your self-esteem, your pride, your ego, everything on a three-minute situation that was really supposed to be fun and have fun and learn, but you actually, like they almost tossed their future away. They felt that maybe the message wasn't right. And because I understood how they felt, because even having a hero mindset, when discouragement sets in, you think differently. You don't think rationally. You think what it does is discouragement feeds the secret identity, right? And whatever you feed grows. And it was not on one occasion, there was probably about three people I literally had to talk off the cliff by speaking life into them and saying, well, wait a second, when in life are you going to speak to a panel of six people judging you on your presentation skills with a camera and a three-minute timer? And they're like, never. I'm like, right. I go, do you only have three minutes to talk to a person? They're like, well, no. I'm like, yeah. I go, so why are you basing your future, your message, your hope, your entire business, and that you lost sleep over that? But then again, I really understood them. 
because even having a hero mindset, you need to guard your heart for that. Because uh, what they do is, uh, you know, you guys heard, at, if you passed, if you went to the finals, you would be emailed 10 p.m. that night. Well, I didn't get an email at 10 p.m. So I didn't get the email at 10 p.m. I stayed up at 11. Maybe, maybe, maybe AOL was slow <laughs> because I have AOL. Didn't get it at 11. I woke up at 12, 1, and 2 in the morning. And you see what's happening? Hero mindset, but now the secret identity is whispering in my ear this. See, I told you your message sucked. The market doesn't want it. Just go back to being a chiropractor. That's fine. You did really good then. You shouldn't have abandoned it. You know, all the talk, the secret identity starts talking to you because it's starting to bring you down and stomp on you in the right moment. But see, if you do, as, as a hero mindset, what is it? Pride, ego, humility. So the pride was I did practice. And maybe sometimes in life when you do your best, it's not good enough in certain circumstances, right? Or let's say, you know, the market decides. See, for me, I realized those, those meeting planners represented the market. Because remember, the market loves the Cardesians. The market loves uh, reality TV. They might not like, and Anthony Robbins had his show canceled on pub, public television. So you see, the market doesn't necessarily go for maybe what a message that you feel is world changing. So I'm battling with the secret identity. I'm up at night saying, you know, what am I gonna do? But I'm so glad I have the hero mindset and talk with you guys because now I could consciously speak against, speak into the secret identity and letting it know, listen, you're not going to do this to me because number one, I'm going to respond where if I have to go home and delete all my hero files and my talk, I'll start, I'll start from scratch again. Like this is not going to get me down. And if the market doesn't like my message, so be it. I'll, 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 I'll redo it and find another way to bring it. And uh, it was pretty disheartening. I could kind of see what these people went through. And then at 8 in the morning, uh, the, the staff, I emailed them. They confirmed me that the email was sent out. And at 8.30, I got an email saying, oh, yeah, we, you know, we probably didn't get the email. You did, you did pass. But I had a taste, and it really tested the pride, the ego, and the humility because when I had discouragement, when there's a little bit of discouragement, the secret identity pops up like a little bunny like that, and, he, and that secret identity just starts hammering your mind, trying to bring you back to mediocrity. You're no good. That was just a fad. That was just an idea. Why don't you just come back and just chill with everybody else and don't go for something big? See, no one liked it anyway. You're no good. It was all there. And so you fight this. It's, this, it's the conflict of the hero and the secret identity. And I just refused for it to happen. I was willing to start from scratch. But I realized when I was able to talk to these people, that were just so discouraged, they were discouraged the rest of the weekend. So all the great stuff we learned, they were shut down. They had great opportunities to advance in different programs. They shut down, they went into scarcity, they moped. And even though, not, even though they knew educationally, I witnessed something that when someone lose hope, when they lose the hope, they literally sit in the ashes and they don't move. The person doesn't invest in themselves, they go into scarcity, they go into lack, they go into depression, and everything in life comes in on them, and they get heavy. And to see that, and you could see it on the outside, they, they age in front of you. And, and I realized in the moment, a hero, because when I speak life into him, a hero is, is a dealer in hope. When the hero comes in, it's to give people that are in that situation hope that there's a way out, that it doesn't have to be that way. So I guess I, I, I do full circle to tell you this. Even if you practice as hard as you can and do things you want to do in life, you'll get areas that you get discouraged or you even feel like you're losing a little bit of hope. And when that happens, the secret identity will have its chance. Because the thing is, the secret identity doesn't die. I wish it did. That's why you fire it. You know, dear secret identity, thank you for trying to protect me all these years. You're no longer needed. But I realize it doesn't die. It just waits. And it's waiting for its moment. So it's almost like it's a wolf. And when you start to starve the secret identity, it gets hungrier, okay? And it, it'll get skinnier. It'll get skinnier. It'll be, it'll be less strong. It'll get a little weak. But it's waiting. And it's, it's like a shark. As soon, as soon as it smells the blood, as soon as it sees its chance, it's going to try to come back. And that is the beautiful blessing of the fight of the secret identity and the superhero in that we have. And we are born to be heroes. In fact, everything that is depressive and insecurity, all that stuff, it's learned. It's educated. So it's becoming child, childlike again, 
because the childlike is the hero, not childish, childlike, and be able to always, always be able to fight it. And to see what happened to people and experience a little bit of taste of myself, I realized, wow, a hero has to be a dealer of hope. So when you see someone down like that, all you can do as a hero is to speak life into them, try to let them see the reality of what it is, and hopefully they'll be able to embrace that and, and move on. But you know, for some people, a couple people, they, they really, their hope is so down, they never, they never got out of the funk of it. And really it was something that was supposed to be fun and exciting, became something that they actually, they determined their status in. Let's talk about that too, status. We do things in life to either raise our status. That's what we're looking for, right? Someone, you know, goes to, you know why people go to Starbucks? It's a status thing. It's not because they have great coffee. You could buy the coffee and make it at home. It's status. For your chiropractors out there, when someone gets chiropractic care, they're looking to raise their status, meaning that, what's that mean? They're healthier, they're happier, they feel better, right? These are all status-raising things. But at the same time, if someone asks me a question, how do you get over the anxiety of, of asking someone to pay for a care plan? Well, when someone pays for something, there's a temporary lowering of their status, right? Because now they have less money because they paid something. But if someone could see that if I pay something and my status becomes higher from paying that, it's just a temporary lowering of status to get results. Healthier, happier, better production, you know, better job abundance, all that stuff. So that's what says, so people have this status thing in their head. So when discouragement sets in, it's an illusion that your status drops as a human individual. And what happens is it goes into, it goes not into empathy, into apathy. So just think of that. When you talk to people, you know, in that conversation, leave that conversation thinking, did I just increase that person's status with this conversation? And that's a huge way. Just if you could just do that this week, saying everybody I come in contact with, I'm going to increase their status as a human individual. Think about that. Or if you leave a conversation, do you decrease their status? Because in, in life, we are searching. We, the hero wants to be admired for achieving amazing things, courage and contribution. And it happens to be status. That's why, that's why you know, there's watches and bags and shirts. People do material things to increase their status. They hang around certain people to increase their status. They have a lot of kids to increase their status. They have a certain job to increase their status. Some people see status in money. Some people see status in spirituality. But hope increases a human being's status. Because I want my status to be one of high hope. When someone says, how you doing? You say, perfect. Because you are. All right? And that's what we have to do. So a hero is a dealer of hope. Think about that. So as the hero comes on the scene, it gives people hope. When people have hope, they get excited, even though the circumstance didn't change yet. So be the person who's willing to be a potentialist. On the scene, when no one's willing to move, you're willing to deliver the hope and do the best you can with what you have in the moment you have it. Hope, hopefully you enjoy this 15-minute fuel. And thank you for allowing me to share this because it was very ironic to go through a temporary, um, uh, it was a false reality. You know, here I had made it to the finals the entire time, but that secret identity shifted my mind. You know, I wasn't, I, I wasn't even going to go to the seminar the next day. I, was, I couldn't wait to wake up and hit the buffet breakfast and start to binge. It was, like, it was like, I see how I literally was causing myself to shrink, you know, but you have to talk to that secret identity and put it in its place. Remember, it's a wolf. It's waiting the side. It's waiting for you. It never dies. So don't think you beat it. I think that's the time when it gets you. So always remember it's there, but you need to control it and tell it and own it, but also embrace it because without that secret identity, you know, you never would have been the amazing person you are today. So be the hero. You're a dealer of hope. And have an amazing day. And thank you for watching 15 Minute Fuel. Uh, make sure you watch episode 34 of We Are Heroes. Also, please go to our store at the Dr. Zeno fan page and get your sweet V-neck shirts, you know. And also, you know, you could change the colors. You can mix and match, match the colors as well. And they fit great. I worked it out in them a couple times. They're holding up. There's no, like, moth-eaten collars. It's really good. It's the best kind of fabric we could get. And have an amazing day. We'll see you tomorrow with 15-Minute Fuel, where hopefully, you know, we fuel your mind, your body, and your future. God bless.